I was doing a lot of Blender stuff. And But now um, I had somebody ask me something, and I realized that, surprisingly, I had never done... I don't think I had ever done a tutorial like this, which is a very common thing you would want to do in Lightwave, which is um, uh, basically want to know how to make a helicopter's rotor spin kind of ad infinitum and how to control that spin. I was like, damn, I guess I had never done that. Because there's a few ways you can do it, and there's a lot of neat ways you can do it in Lightwave. I thought that since Lightwave 11.5 just came out, uh, I'm planning on picking that up whenever I get the chance. I'm just so busy with Touch Animator and other programming, uh, I'd like to get back into that. So I thought I'd just do this little Lightwave thing for you. Uh, I'm still going to be doing Blender tutorials, Unity tutorials, everything. It's just a matter of how much time I have. So, so anyway, here's a little helicopter model, and I went into... Um, I think this one comes with Lightwave, I'm not sure. Um, if you go into Modeler, you'll see that I had this hind helicopter model here. And I just took the um, the rotor and I split it up. I, I, I put it on its own layer. And then under the View uh, section here, I clicked on Pivot and I placed the pivot. First I hit Center Pivot, which put it right in the center, and then I moved it down right to the bottom there. All right. So we have the uh, helicopter model into layout here with the uh, rotor blade all set up and everything. So um, there's several ways that you could make the rotor blade uh, just keep spinning uh, so that you don't have to hand animate it. Uh, so let's go ahead and select the rotor blade and then we'll hit Y on the keyboard to go to our rotation mode and you'll see that what I did was I, I turned off the P and B, the pitch and bank axis, because we only want to rotate on the header so that means that we are not accidentally rotating on a different axis axis. So uh, I'm just going to go to like for example frame 20 here and then under the rotation value I'm going to type in 360. Let's go back to the original part and go to zero. Okay so this is much slower than a real rotor would run but I'm just doing it for the purposes of showing you on this tutorial. So now it goes from zero to 20 and it rotates. Okay. Uh, you could, for example, type in any rotational value you wanted. You could type, you know, 1,000, whatever, and Lightweight will keep interpolating it over and over again. So that's another way you could do it. If you had a set number of animation frames and you knew how many times you wanted it to rotate, cycle, of course, one entire cycle is 360 degrees, you could just multiply the number of times you want to cycle by 360 uh, and set a keyframe for that with that value. Uh, then if you go into the graph editor, uh, one nice thing you can do here is under the um, it's hind layer 2. Uh, remember, we're rotating on the H axis, all right? And if you want to keep uh, continue um, cycling, basically, just uh, set the pre-behavior or the post-behavior, or both, to repeat in this case. If you set to oscillate, it'll go back and forth. If you set to constant, it will just go from that uh, point forward. Uh, offset repeat, for example, if you were... Uh, animating a guy kind of climbing up a mountain or something like that, it would keep going up and up and up. But for something like a helicopter blade, you would just set to repeat, all right? So that's one way of doing it. Uh, there's another way of doing this. Um, okay, we'll just leave this animation here because it kind of goes into this. This way it gives you a bit more control. Uh, let's go ahead and add a null object. And I'll hit uh, T on the keyboard to move this null object over. Oops, sorry. Forgot that I'm on frame 20. Uh, hit this little uh, window here to pop up the dope sheet and delete the key. Let's move back to frame zero. Oops, and we'll move this little guy over. Okay, and then I'll select the rotor blade and I'll hit M on the keyboard to bring up the motion panel. Under add modifier, I'm going to select cyclist. So this will uh, cycle a, a, a bit of animation uh, according to the movement of some other object. So you have control over which axes you want to have the animation applied to and then what type of motion you want from the uh, control object to be used. So in this case, of course, again, we're only concerned with the heading. All right. And we're only concerned with the animation from frame 0 to 20 because that's where we set our last keyframe on. And for the cycle control object, we're going to choose that null object we just put in there. And then I'm going to choose the position Y for this. So that means that when I move this null object up and down, 
it's going to cycle through the animation frames depending on how much I move these objects up and down. Uh, you can see end behavior repeat, which means that's what you would want for something like this, like a cycling object. And I'm going to set the controller range, which means the starting and ending kind of coordinates that you want to evaluate for this parent object. So uh, I'm going to say, like, for example, um, I'm going to say 0 to 10. So if we move from 0 to, to 10 units up and down, this null object is going to move back and forth through this animation. All right. Okay. So now what I can do is I can just move this object up and down and it cycles through the animation process. So this way I could, for example, I could take this and instead of animating the object kind of, because of course, let's say your helicopter is banking or is kind of landing or something like that. You could, for example, um, go to frame like uh, 20, move this up, and then we'll go to frame 16, we'll move it up just a bit, because you know how helicopters kind of, you know, descend. And so now you can see that when we play the animation back, the helicopter blade starts slowing down based on the uh, based on the playback of this uh, little uh, null object here. So that way you can have so you could for example uh, a good way to do this would be for example the, the speed of the helicopter for example uh, because if you go into the cyclist you can choose instead of position you could choose for example the path length or the speed or the forward progress uh, the heading angle for example so that way you could control something like this uh, you, you could have it under control of the actual movement of the helicopter, for example. And, uh, for example, you could have it slow down, or, for example, if you had sort of like vents or something like that on a spaceship, you could have them kind of open and close based on the banking uh, of, of the object. So those are a couple different ways to do it. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this LightWave tutorial. I hope to have a Blender tutorial soon and some more stuff about Touch Animator, everything like that. So uh, if you get a chance uh, to buy Touch Animator on uh, the Apple App Store or the Android Store, go ahead and please do so. And if you like this video, go ahead and like it and comment. And I'll see you guys next time.